Today, the goal of our panel is global youth networks. And so during this discussion, we have a few amazing speakers and we're gonna discuss about some actions and strategies about how YLN, which is the Youth Leadership Network and World Academy of Arts and Sciences can work together with all your organizations to take the next steps in uniting all these global fronts. So I wanna introduce a few speakers that we have on our panel today and they're each gonna give about a five minute intro and then from there, we'll dive into some deeper questions. So why don't we start with you, Frederica? Oh, hi, everybody, and thank you, Jody. Uh, I'm delighted to be, to be here today and have the opportunity to participate in this important event and discuss the strategies that we should implement in order to build this global uh, alliance. Um, before starting, I would like to briefly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Federica, and I am partner of Youth Leadership Network, and recently I became junior fellow of the World Academy of Arts and Science. And also I am the president of a committee uh, of the Italian Federation of Human Rights, uh, whose goal is to spread the knowledge about human rights, uh, monitor their violations, uh, and um, create awareness in public opinion. So. Uh, regarding the topic of discussion of today, I think that we are all on the same page and we all believe that uh, uh, youth must be integrated more into the multilateral system at the local, uh, national and international level. And uh, we know that uh, um, um, at the end of the year 2030, which is the deadline for the Sustainable Development Goals, um, the number of youth is expected to grow by 7%. And according to that, I think that uh, youth must be integrated and involved in the formulation of political and social um, policies and frameworks. Um, the new generations are the driving force of change. But I think that uh, in order to promote youth development, it's necessary to build a very strong and active network. And uh, from my point of view, networking mustn't take place randomly, but uh, um, according to specific strategies that I would like to, to suggest. Uh, first of all, I think we need to, to focus on the right people. And with the right people, uh, I mean the people who believe in the same values and in the same objectives because I think that networking is not just simply um, connecting people, but it's something more because it's connecting people with people, people with ideas and people with opportunities. Secondly, um, in order to build a powerful network, I think that youth organizations must be able to clearly communicate three things who they are, what they are doing, and what they want to achieve. Because if you think uh, all organizations uh, know each other and are composed of people, young people who are like-minded and are driven by the same ambitions, I think it's easier to promote their dialogue and so understand the bigger picture, pictures of the challenges that, that we are called on to face. Uh, thirdly, um, with the aim of encouraging dialogue, commitment, and create this global alliance, I think that we should uh, um, maximize the use of platforms and IT tools that uh, have been implemented in the modern world, especially after the, the spread of the pandemic. And I think uh, that uh, the employment of these tools Mm, allows youth to express their message to reach the largest number of people and therefore um, bringing uh, mm, awareness and empowerment of the next generations. So these are the strategies that I would like to point out during this panel. And uh, I wish to conclude my short speech uh, by saying that uh, it's um, evident that uh, the societal change also passes through networks. And when networks mature um, into an effective community where all people, where all its participants think and act collectively, 
uh, I think that we can achieve important and powerful results. So this is my message. And uh, as I mentioned to you, Jody, uh, I'm not be able to stay for, for the rest of the session, unfortunately, due to uh, working commitment. But uh, I promise that I will be with you in, uh, in spirit. And I really hope to see you soon in the next uh, event. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Federica. If you want to post your information in the chat, that would be great. That way people can follow up with you after. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you again. Great. Thank you. We're going to continue. And Federica made some really great points about how the youth population is growing by 7% and how we have to get more specific with networking in order to create this global alliance. So I'd like to turn it over to Dina, who's a fellow team member of mine for the YLN Youth Leadership Network, and just hear a brief introduction about yourself. Um, again, introduction, five minutes, just a little bit about your organization. And then in the second half, we'll dive into the deeper questions and strategies. So Dina, please take it away. Thank you, Jody. And thank you everybody for being here today uh, and for us to discuss on this important issue. Uh, I'm Dina Dragia. I'm from Croatia. I'm one of the founders of Youth Leadership Network, also a junior fellow of World Academy. I have a background in international relations and diplomacy and in anthropology. And YLN serves as a bridge between uh, young people and decision makers. Uh, today, I'm speaking on behalf of YLN, and I will extend the idea about the digital platform that Jody already mentioned at the GL21 conference. Uh, also, Federica mentioned that it was amazing that uh, platforms are important, and we do agree. Uh, we as well, and think uh, that about if we want to create a global alliance, we think that uh, nowadays transparent and free communication through online platform is one of the necessary ways of networking, especially in these uncertain times of pandemic that prevents us from face-to-face -face interactions. And that is why we decided to provide a concrete solution by presenting our application and a platform that is designed to create a global alliance among civil society and decision makers, and also to connect youth worldwide in a short time. So our main idea is to enhance the voice and power of youth and civil society in global and national decision making through quick and transparent online networking and sharing ideas is creating a social network uh, app based on audio chat and forum chat uh, that gives equal voice to all and connects people from same and different fields in forging a global alliance of united projects and ideas, ones that is similar to a clubhouse. Uh, but we decided to go even further and to develop a platform where online discussions among civil society and decision makers is a main focus. And it is important to emphasize how this is not a platform uh, designed for random comments or random discussions or spreading one's ideologies, uh, but one for transparent communication on logical solutions. And therefore, even if this application will be open for everyone, a person joining has to register with providing a valid ID and accepting the terms of use. And by accepting the terms of use, person accepts to share evidence-based data avoid discriminatory speech and personal ideology, and agreeing in recognizing herself in values such as unity in diversity and mutual respect. Uh, each person that register will have a verified profile with name, surname, date, and place of birth, area of interest, biography, and private chat would also be possible, similarly to LinkedIn page. Uh, the application will have a world map. And by clicking to a specific country or a state, you can start or participate in a discussion about that particular place. Uh, for example, Croatia was hit by a devastating earthquake recently, and people would be able to click on Croatia and to discuss that topic into details. Uh, or you can just search for a place or a topic on searching options, similarly to Google, Google search. And besides platform, we'll have a possibility of data collection, which is very important, uh, data collection of specific concerns through organized questionnaires. And the last and maybe most important part is that the app will have a section with board of mentors, senior officials, current decision makers, verified experts, and investors that could directly turn ideas into action and to enhance the voice and power of youth and civil society in global and uh, national decision making by promoting their ideas and also to closely working with them on those projects. 
And to sum up, uh, I would like to say that Wylan believes that well-organized online networking will secure global alliance, will promote unity and diversity, and will present how thinking independently together is possible. Uh, we believe that this is a platform uh, which is very important because decision-making processes are usually exclusive. And we think that this application is able to secure more inclusive uh, global and united leadership. Uh, we already spoke to agencies that could realize our idea. Uh, but we would love to continue our work together with the United Nations and World Academy. And uh, when we speak about World Academy and how World Academy could help, uh, we believe that through mentorship programs that young leaders mentioned yesterday, uh, and by assisting in helping networking with people that could help us developing and financing our application, and also by using and promoting that same application. And I hope soon we are all going to use this app and connect globally in just one click. Perfect. Thanks Thank so much, you. Gina. Trying to learn a little bit more about our panelists before we dive deeper into the strategies and actions. So let's continue now with Vanessa from the POP movement. Thank you so much, Jody. Um, hello, everyone. I am really happy about being part of this honorable planning panel representing the POP movement. And thank you so much to the World Academy of Art and Science and Youth Leadership Network for the opportunity to contribute to creating a strong global youth network. Um, I am Vanessa Hernandez, POP Youth Mentor, and I have been working as a mentor in the POP movement since two and a half years. I hold a bachelor's degree in chemist and chemistry, pharmacist and biologist. One of my particular interests is climate change and the effects on global health. And I am currently based in Mexico, and I love to create opportunities for youth lead climate action projects. Um, well, I would like to share a little bit about the POP movement. And so POP stands for Protect Our Planet. POP is an organization that aims to empower the youth to have an active participation in addressing issues of climate change. Within the POP movement, we work alongside different organizations, companies, institutions, and governments from more than 70 countries. Since we believe that the impacts of climate change will not affect a single country and will affect everyone in the same way. We believe in ourselves, the power of the youth of the world to unite and face this challenge together. The time to act is now and we inspire youth by knowledge, creating capacity building. We have seen that there is a need to bring billions of young people together to address climate change. So that in the future, they could become sustainable thinkers in whatever profession they develop. Um, there is an immense need to link all the youth associations, organizations, and most importantly, each young individual. And we work to provide them a platform where they can share their action, their projects, and integrate activities, mobilize a collective efforts, share knowledge, and share what they are doing to address climate change. We provide a platform for young people, including minorities, indigenous, tribal communities, among others, to showcase and share their work on climate action, giving them the opportunity to look for investors or present it to governments and private relationships to take the project on a large scale. It is also sought that young people reflect and learn from other young people from different parts of the world and, the, and to create a networking platform to continue with inspiration on protecting our planet. We connect young people with experts to create more opportunities for them. And we believe that to create a global network, we need sustainable partnership, practicing empathy, communication, love, respect, and transparency, empowering relationships, building capacities for equity and inclusion. And we look forward to work together with um, all of you. And we are really happy about being participating in this global panel and to start making this great collaboration between young organizations. Thank you so much, Judy. Thanks for sharing that, Vanessa. Um, and so we're going to continue as well. And we are our next speaker is from the he's a founder and executive director of Emancipate in Indonesia, and that is Marjianta. Floor is yours. Um, thank you, Jody. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Gian, uh, and I'm the founder and executive director of Emancipate Indonesia. We are a nonprofit organization uh, that was established in 2017 that focuses on modern slavery issues. 
So we focus on child labor issues. Uh, we focus also on the, uh, the welfare of the young workers, the working class of young people. And of course, um, forced marriages and forced sexual exploitations as well, and encouraging ethical uh, con consumption for people to be more aware about the product that they're buying and the effects to these people, and not only people, of course, but of course, uh, to our environment as well. Um, aside from Emancipate Indonesia, uh, where, which, uh, where uh, I, I lead the organization to do research, advocacy, campaign, and, and trainings, um, I'm also, uh, I was also part of the Youth Advisory Panel for UNFPA Indonesia. So we're basically advising the UNFPA Indonesia, the United Nations Populations Fund, to actually engage with the government stakeholders from high-level meetings in order to make um, sustainable and meaningful youth engagement uh, in policymaking, um, as particularly on sustainable development goals and what can we do about it as young people. And I was recently also have been the social media ambassador for Amnesty International Indonesia, promoting uh, human rights um, and social justice as well. Um, uh, and also I'm the spokesperson and co-initiator of the youth movement for FCTC, a framework convention on tobacco control. We're focusing on a youth participation to tackle uh, tobacco issues in Indonesia, um, especially um, um, in regards in the perspective of global health. So it's not only about changing people how to make them stop smoking, but also to demand accountability from the corporations, from the big tobacco corporations that are actually taking profits uh, from this addiction of young people nowadays. So basically in general, <laughs> I think I'm a generalist in a way. I work in human rights issues, children's rights issues. I, I was also a children facilitator since 2010 and the Minister of Women Empowerment and Children Protection in Indonesia. Um, I'm also, I recently also worked with UNICEF as well for their global program on youth movement to tackle non-communicable diseases. But also I have passion in political economy. I used to work at Indonesia for global justice as well. It promotes a trade uh, that is actually, uh, you know, against uh, the uh, free trade agreements. That actually, we think that free trade comes along with multilateralism, but sometimes they just uh, drive our labor laws, environmental laws into like almost non-existent. Uh, so I was also advocating for that. Um, also with the labor movement, uh, also with the health movement. Um, so basically I'm a generalist. Uh, uh, just uh, ask me whatever you like, maybe I can answer, but maybe uh, that's me in a nutshell. I'm, I'm looking forward to engage more with uh, all of you here. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Great, thank you for that. We're gonna continue on and um, we're gonna do an introduction by Elena. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jody. Hello, everyone. Um, hello from Ukraine, from Kyiv. And I'm really glad to be part of this panel today. I followed several of the panels before, and I know that uh, youth uh, participation issues, youth leadership, uh, and youth inclusion uh, topics have already been discussed. But I think that today we uh, would like to focus more on the network of networks, yes, on this global, uh, globalization. So first, several words about myself. Uh, I'm the director of the uh, private Ukrainian foundation based in Kyiv, Ukraine. Uh, that uh, provides non-formal education uh, program for young people. Uh, from 20 to 35 years. And our programs are mainly for uh, those uh, young activists who want to take active role and take active part in the development of the country and in transforming it. Because as uh, you know, Ukraine passes through the uh, time of transformations as the rest of the world, but in our country it is more uh, uh, urgent and uh, different systems and different fields are being changed from education to science to healthcare system, etc. So uh, our foundation uh, works with those young people who are really active and who take uh, their responsibility on their own future and the future of their countries. Uh, the biggest program of the foundation is called Young Generation Will Change Ukraine. And as you see, the, na the name is self-explicit. Uh, we give different instruments and uh, possibilities for these young people, for the selected young people to study how they can 
implement uh, implement changes and how they can uh, use the best European and world experience and bring it to Ukraine. So we act since uh, uh, 2010 and the visionary uh, of our foundation was the past uh, member of the World Academy of Art and Science, Dr. Bogdan Havrilishin, who was also a member of the Board uh, of Trustees and was one of those core people who uh, helped think about the uh, global future. So I'm, I'm really glad to be the associate member of the World Academy of Art and Science. And I'm also part of several other uh, global networks, uh, like I'm the member of the uh, Kiev Multinational Rotary Club. As you know, this is a huge global network. And that's why I have some ideas about the functioning of uh, well-known and effective networks. Uh, in our programs, we usually accept young people who are active, patriotic, ethical, so they uh, correspond to several uh, standards, and they usually are uh, representatives of the other networks. And I think that this principle could be applied also to building an effective global alliance of uh, ne other networks so that each uh, junior fellow of the academy, each active member of the academy of young age is already a part of some network or networks. And this is very important to uh, bring those networks, each member of the academy and junior fellows are connected to. And also to uh, finish my short introduction, I would like to mention several uh, in instruments that are used in Ukraine to enforce uh, youth participation, uh, namely the youth delegates to the UN program. Uh, as you know, only 40 countries in the world out of around 200 uh, present at the UN have their youth delegates. And this is a strong recommendation to start such a program in your country. I'm sure that you have your youth delegates, but there are still lots of countries that don't. And I'm happy to say that our foundation was one of those who helped launch and establish this program in Ukraine, together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with the Ministry of Youth uh, and Sports, and till now, uh, the, the foundation coordinates this program uh, and finances it. Uh, this is the practice of our country, and it is one of the best uh, eight that are in the guide uh, guideline for the youth delegates in the world. So this is an important instrument to ensure youth delegation and to uh, involve young people in the decision-making pro, uh, process uh, on the global level. So for now, this is it. Of course, I have some thoughts about the building of networks and I think we'll pass to this later. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. And we're gonna move on to our final introduction and that is Ivana. Uh, hello, everyone. I, I hope you hear me well. Uh, my name is Ivana Lazarovsky and I'm from Serbia. Since uh, 2017, I've been a junior fellow of, of the World Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, by vocation, I'm a political science, uh, scientist and uh, specialized in the international security studies. Environmental security is my, uh, my master's degree. So um, I want, wanted to share uh, thoughts with you on the connections on the connecting of the of the of the youth leaders so as you all know we live in the era when it has never been easier to connect uh, to share knowledge ideas perspectives so it is not really about how can we connect youth leaders but rather what are the bases of, of our interactive work and what are the values and principles connecting our future leaders uh, therefore, in order to make a strong alliance of future leaders that will be able to guide us to the better future, we need to gather around very precise set of values and principles 
that each one of us uh, will be ready to protect. Uh, so this set of values needs to be communicated um, among the prestigious uh, alumni networks and the youth movements. Um, and that, that is actually, as you all know, uh, uh, alumni networks are networks of the prestigious universities are one of the strongest uh, youth uh, leadership uh, networks. So it is really about how are we going to advocate for the, the, the strong values that we are going to build, build and that will actually work as a glue for uh, all the youth leaders willing to, to make changes in the future. So today I would like to discuss a couple of, uh, of uh, values that I think are the essential to build up a mission that will uh, lead us towards a um, world in common and, and uh, common goals. So that's it. And I, let me know when I can, uh, if I can tell them now, or I can, or should wait a little bit more when we start the discussion. Great. I think um, that's actually a great place to start. And so now that all the audience members and the panelists have gotten to know each other a little better, I don't know about everyone else, but I'm so blown away to be even sitting with all of you and hearing each of your different introductions from all over the world. You can tell everyone is involved in so many different groups and we're all sitting here today for a reason. So let's hopefully turn this conversation now into more action steps. Um, and as Dina mentioned, we're both a part of the Youth Leadership Network. And so our main goal with World Academy of Arts and Sciences is to have these conversations that hopefully assist you guys to our best of our ability to create these global alliances. So I really would love to um, to kind of ask each of the panelists certain questions based on their introductions and their backgrounds. And please feel free to write again in the chat and I will address these questions as well. So I think it is very important that Ivana just kind of brought us back to the basis here. And with so many different people around the world trying to connect and make glue for everyone with values and ethics and little things like this, I'd love to you know, start your next five minutes, Ivana, with what are your thoughts on how do you get people united under the same values when we all come from different cultures and different places in the world? Yeah. Uh, so, first of all, uh, leaders need to, need to act in an ecologically conscious and responsible manner. And how do we pursue this, uh, this principle? Uh, simply by making a number one principle of the youth leadership network, that all the actions, projects, perspectives of the network are 100% aligned with the Paris Climate Agreement, for example. So there would be a checkup. If, there is a proposal for action. It has to be 100% aligned with the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, my second thought would be that all the perspectives of the youth movement are embodied within the Sustainable Development Goals Program of the United Nations. And third, the proposal would be that the development, that the only development policy that will be able to save us from a major economic existential crisis, which is quite close, I would say, has to be built on the principles of the green growth and green economy. So we would not want to be engaged in other types of uh, development. Uh, fourth, and very important one, uh, especially from uh, for the political science uh, scientists, uh, students, and I think uh, we have to have a very strong advocacy for the transition of the concept of, the sec of security from military to human and environmental notion of security. How so? Uh, global pandemic crisis of coronavirus has proven that enormous uh, confronted military capacities are no longer adequate protection or sol nor solution to the challenges we are facing today. So this has to be very important part um, of, of our program. Uh, fifth, I need, uh, we need to um, develop, uh, we need to develop our programs with a transdisciplinary perspective and integrated knowledge in order to achieve the highest potential of the existing knowledge. And last but not least, the paradigm of the future leaders needs to be understand, uh, needs to understand and highly respect existing uh, diversities as, uh, as our one of our greatest potentials and values. So 
these are the principles we need to uh, follow and uh, advocate for and uh, in order to um, complete the mission which will construct the world in common that will be able to protect uh, people uh, our planet and peace so as you all know as i said in the beginning we can easily connect nowadays and uh, from all around the world but it is really about uh, the, the values that will make us very strongly connected and uh, uh, our alliances need to be built on, on the values that I have just um, promoted. I, I'm sure there are much more of the, of the points that, I, that we can discuss, but um, these are some of the thoughts that I think should be the, the, the principles of the Youth Leadership Network that can later go on while we make alliances with different uh, networks and um, that's it. Great, thank you so much for starting that framework for us. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Dina now. As Ivana was talking about the principles and values and the five different steps we can take and get this baseline, especially with COVID-19 and all these different things that are happening around the world, it seems that each country or city is acting individually and independently. And so Ivana did a great job of highlighting just the similar principles that we all need to have and being accountable for and checking in on proposals to make sure that we are still that united front. So I'd love to bring in the youth aspect of that. And as she mentioned at the end with the Youth Leadership Network, that is our goal. So I'd love for you to chime in on your thoughts in steps on how is this member sign up in the app and how does this all connect and how do we make sure that we stay consistent with these values and principles that Ivana just mentioned? Uh, I would just like to start with saying that uh, Kiwalan uh, has only one uh, race and that is human race and we respect everyone. And this platform is also open for everyone. And also uh, what is very important that, that we will uh, translate uh, directly so that everyone who maybe doesn't know uh, every language can also join and uh, we will have uh, open discussion so the same as YLN is uh, opening their our doors for everyone that wants to join uh, but I would like to also say as Ivana pointed out uh, the mindset of the people the values that we are living are important and we have to just understand that we are all together in this world and that we have to fight together for a better tomorrow even though we are separated by cultural backgrounds and me as anthropologists i would like to emphasize that uh, all of us in wildland we respect others we respect other cultures and we are showing mutual respect and that will be shown in our platform also uh, by just opening doors to everyone and uh, being kind of here for those who I would like to, uh, for us to be their voices. Great, thank you for that answer. Um, I'd like to bring it over back to Vanessa. And um, a lot of what you were saying in your introduction is how, how you present and how do you connect with government officials and actions and experts and really taking the climate change movement that you guys are doing at the grassroots level but bringing that to the higher leaders of your country, of your cities. So if you could just walk us through your process and how you know, we can start to understand what's the best way to get to experts, government leaders, connecting people from grassroots all the way to the top, that would be great. And then I'd love if you could tie that back onto World Academy of Arts and Sciences and YLN with some recommendations about how we can move forward doing that same strategy. Well, thank you so much, Jody, for um, for your introduction and, and for explaining more about the important high, like the points that I should highlight. Um, so, well, within the pop movement, um, in these two and a half years that I have been working as a mentor, I have identified um, some human values that are important to care of and while we are working on creating partnerships with institutions, organizations, governments, companies, communities, I have identified some key items that I think that we need to improve and care of. So I would like to share like these important items um, that could be taken uh, into account for to all the organizations and to 
the World Art of Society, the World Academy of Art and Science also. And um, I think that for the first item that I would like to highlight, it's a personal piece. Um, I think that in order for us to start thinking and creating a global network, first, we need to work to create peace in our surroundings. And we need to think, do you have peace with your family? Do you have peace with your neighbors, with your team members? We cannot think in changing the world and have peace without having peace ourselves. So something that has been a great success within the pop movement creating partnership is to treat us as a family. We take care of our co-workers and let's, so let's treat us as a family. I think that it's a, a great strategy that we are following. And the second um, item that I have identified is to actively listen to each other with empathy, respect, and love. We need to know how is the other feeling during this pandemic and after it, mental health will be crucial. And most of us have been facing some challenging issues that will affect us in our performance. So we need to take our care of our partner, our coworker, friend. And sometimes people don't feel okay or they are facing that hard moment in their home. And as consequences, they could have a negative behavior with you, with us. So don't take things personally. Do not make assumptions about others. And something that I have um, also learned within the pop movement is not, that nothing is right, nothing is wrong. Something um, that is really important is to listen to everyone. Let them innovate and create things different of yours. Accept and respect their ideas, inspire them, and don't let your ego control you and be open-minded. The third item that I would like to highlight is um, work with equity, inclusion, to create sustainable partnerships. If we talk about generating a global network of young people, we also have to talk about including all sectors of society because we all need everyone. We need to work in a transdisciplinary way, understanding different realities. We need to work alongside different cultures, respect their ideas, actively listen to their needs and support each other to create a sustainable partnership. Most of the times we talk about that us, the youth are the change makers in the future, but in order for us to create a real change and, and work to protect our planet, we need experts to share their knowledge with us. We need the expertise of decision makers, and most of them are not youth. We need opportunities created by them, opportunities to participate in global decisions because they have the most of the control in the world. Equity and inclusion also means fair opportunities to everyone. Throughout my experience, I have realized that not all young people have the same opportunities. Within the pop movement, we have worked closely with most vulnerable communities, including indigenous communities, and we have worked closely with them. And we have seen that, saw that we, um, there's a lot of bright young people who strive every day to stand out, but not everyone has the tools to achieve their goals. So we were creating opportunities to support all these young people to achieve their goals, creating capacities for equity and inclusion and giving everyone the opportunity to be a leader. Another um, important point that I would like to highlight is to never lose professionalism. Professionalism is another key item. Separate work than personal situations. Always communicate with your team in a transparent way. Have a clear communication. Always work in an integrated way. Accept your reality, define your goals and success. Work on them, enjoy the process, and this will help you not to feel jealous or to feel bad um, about the other and work healthily for your dreams. So I think that let's work in a world where we are all successful. And another and, and really important point is to work with confidence and collaboration without control and protagonism. To create a global alliance, it's important to understand the meaning of collaboration share ideas, share work, share the resources, share the credit. If we create something, everyone's name is in. Otherwise, anyone is in. So we need to find a common goal together. What is that common goal that we are going to work on? How is it going to benefit everyone from it? So I think that another important thing is let's have, let's leave behind the control, the bureaucracy, the protagonists, Things work better when we are thousands of successful people working together for success instead of only one successful person working for their own success. So I think that let's arm that puzzle together. I know that each of us have one important and valuable piece 
So let's start putting together those pieces. But before we start, let's take a look at these five basic and important items and start a big collaboration. Great, thank you for that, Vanessa. I really liked each of the points you were talking about, especially working with inclusion and connecting with all different sectors. And it was a good reminder to put personal peace first before you can help others um, in working healthy for your dream. I love that quote. I think it should be on t-shirts. Um, I think it's really important because each of us are working for pretty huge world problems that we're trying to fix. And you know, we've seen it in our own team, I see it every day at work, that there are a lot of different personalities and it's very easy to say these values and very easy to say we're confidently include everyone, don't have an ego, but when you have such a dream and such a passion for something, you have to keep these remind, and even you saying it just reminded me, I really have to check myself every time I move through each of the process. It's reminding yourself to stay grounded, reminding to include everyone, don't be too bossy, don't let any people feel left out. So I think that's very important moving forward. And as the leaders and everyone on this panel embodies each of these values is to continuously bring your team back to reality, continuously bring them back to the ground and make sure they're putting their, themselves first and peace in mind. And everyone's enjoying this. A lot of times people in organizations, they get too stressed out and they forget that it's supposed to be fun. Changing the world is fun. Connecting with youth is fun. So I'm really happy that you just reminded us all of that and every leader that's on this panel and listening, make sure that your team is reminded of that and make sure everyone's taking a deep breath with all these heavy issues we're talking about. So I'd love to continue the panel with Gian. Um, when you did your introduction, I was blown away. I mean, you hold a lot of different positions. You have a lot of different passions from human rights to global justice to world health. I mean, I was trying to write them all down, but I just couldn't keep up. And so I'm really curious, because um, I know a lot of people on the panel and a lot of listeners, they're also involved in a lot of different organizations. And naturally, as leaders, we have this type of personality where we want to put our hand in almost everything and change the world in some capacity in different levels and different organizations. So. I'd really love to hear first your opinion on how do you balance this? How do you get others to share similar passions? Because we don't want to be the only ones that are out here fighting for a change. We want the world to also get our passion and our energy. So first and foremost, I'd love for you to answer that. And then I'd like you to connect it to steps moving forward based on that and uniting all these different groups you're a part of and where you've seen it work and haven't worked. So the floor is yours. Wow, that was an amazing uh, question, Jody. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> so basically, um, to in order for us to find our commonalities of our passion, we should start with compassion. Compassion means like we're being we empathize with other people. We put ourselves in their shoes, but we realize we can never be in their shoes. So what can we do? to bridge the gap between us, the distance between us, because everybody has their own context and their own way of living. Uh, and the diversity is a great strength for us to come together and to solve many other uh, global issues with their own complexities as well, because there is no one size fits all. So we need to have everybody being listened, but being listened is not enough, right? We had, we, that, and that's why I start with compassion. So you listen intently, actively listening um, with your peers, but also when you, list, when, when you engage with high level works or grassroots works uh, with the people, middle or class people, or even the uh, politicians, high level politicians, uh, you need to really use your compassion because in that way, you see it not only as individual struggles, but as collective struggles. I think Vanessa has mentioned it before, and I, I really agree that uh, it is about collectivism rather than individualism. And that is actually how I position myself when I have all of these organizations. I realize that I have a part there and my part is only one of many parts there. So I do not see myself as the savior. I do not see myself as this key person to everything. So I, I always try more ways to actually not only hand over the mic, but to make that the necessity that we don't even need a mic. So then everybody can speak, everybody can have the same opportunities and progress to move forward. 
Um, and of course, time management, etc. Those are like uh, life skills that we can have. But I think it's also more about um, yeah, compassion. I think it's underrated uh, in a way, uh, but I think it really is important. And I think to follow up with what we can do actually uh, to make compassion a reality, um, I think is uh, we need to actually realize the seats among us are they filled with enough diverse people or not? Because whenever I was invited to a international uh, dialogues, uh, I think I talked with Marco from the WAAS here as well. Uh, I always check with the gender composition. Is there any female speakers on the panel? Because I realized there are too much all pa male panelists and eventually all the patriarchal norms that actually are leading to the uh, social ecological destructions we cannot have even more men speaking as well at the same time, cis heterosexual men, let alone, right? We need to have more diverse voices. We need to have more working class voices. We need to have more indigenous people voices. We need to have more person of colors. So maybe maybe next time I, I go to a WAAS conference, I would like to see more Asian people, more African people, um, more people from other regions so then we can have more diverse voices because once again, we do not speak over people we do not speak over their complexities. They own the experience. They are the only ones who can talk about it. So the least thing we can do is actually to hand over the mic. And then at the end of the day, we will have a, a development, uh, a world that works for everyone, not just the few who are actually born privileged or maybe they didn't realize they privileged. So I really like you, Jody, for saying that you keep checking yourself. Uh, and that's very important as well. I'm, I'm really checking myself as well with my own privilege as a male, she's heterosexual male, even though I'm a POC, I'm an Asian, uh, Southeast Asian person, but but still in my own country, I'm privileged. So I always try to position myself. And then when, when uh, so I think my input would be to be to have more diversity to the network that we're going to build. So then we can capture more complexities to sense the boundaries within the systems because we need systems change, but system doesn't change itself. The people change the systems, the structural change that we need. Individual behavior will never be enough. It will take like two or three life cycles of the earth to make like, okay, I leave it to yourself. It's your own right. We cannot have that. We need to use what, get, let's get back to my first point, compassion. When we see it as a collective struggle and we position our actions, towards others and, and then we bring it over to a, a, a nation level. Um, and, and then when, when nations act upon themselves under this pandemic, some nations have vaccines, some nation doesn't have vaccines. And what can we do to, to, to actually further push the multilateralism so that it becomes more collectivism. So then more nations have more compassions, not competition as their own driving uh, forces of change uh, uh, for, for actually a better world. So maybe that's my, uh, my point for now. Thank you, Jody. That, that's great to hear. Um, a lot of great points that you mentioned and a lot of one-liners from this panel. That's, that's why you guys were selected, obviously. You're great speakers, but I really liked what you said, more compassion, less competition. Um, I think that was really great. And also when you mentioned knowing your part, you know, we're all in all these different organizations, but truly knowing your part, not trying to do too much in each of the organizations and overstep people. That's really great. I love... Um, you know, transitioning now into Elena, where, you know, she really talked about the youth generation, how that's going to change Ukraine and how she is initiating and trying to select people to represent um, her country and all these different organizations. So I would really like to know, um, and this will help not only World Academy, but also Youth Leadership Network, how do you select, you know, youth delegates or how, how do you go through this process of seeing who would be the best fit to represent and who would be the best leader to then ignite fires under everyone else to get inspired to make a change. And then I guess, what would you recommend our two organizations and everyone else on the panel when you're going to recruit your team and also uplift all these organizations and trying to make a name truly for your country? And I believe that's you know your main mission with Ukraine. Thank you, Jody, and thank you to all of the speakers uh, today. You uh, touched upon different uh, aspects of the question of how to build an uh, effective network, what should be uh, taken into account, what values, what uh, principles, etc. And this was also in my notes for today. 
because uh, to to build an effective network and to build an effective program and also the youth delegates to the UN program, for example, yes, in particular, we would like to know what people we want to see, what organizations we want to choose, what uh, principles and what values they have, and how we can measure their achievements and how we can see it, because this is the basic thing for building the effective program an effective network and so on so uh, concerning the um, world leadership program or the world leadership network uh, it is important for us to understand uh, which types of the networks or organizations we would like to involve there uh, we would like to understand how we can uh, see the improvement of the proactive position of these organizations yes what core fields of activities do they have uh, for example uh, should they be active in science or education or environment politics diplomacy culture or we want to have all of them so uh, to start with this is a very important step basic step uh, and also these uh, principles that uh, give the fundamental thing for development uh, further. And then uh, what this network could also be helpful for these young people. It is uh, compatible with uh, any program that we implement for the young people. Uh, we propose them some opportunities uh, for the development, which in turn changes the country yes because they develop and uh, they uh, acquire new knowledge they are active they do these changes on the their level local national international and thus they help the country in our case with the international uh, network of uh, youth organizations it is also important to to see what this network could be helpful to these organizations, because of course we can think of what type of network it could be, what values it should have, but what does it give to others? Why should other networks, which uh, already exist in the world, why should they be interested to join? And uh, here I usually, um, uh, apply the combined approach, the business and scientific approach. Uh, so to, to see what uh, networks and, and organizations are already existing uh, in the world, what which of them are successful and um, which which of them we could, could already approach. Of course, we should think about the project management approach to the uh, building of this network and see what exact steps, what are the KPI for each step, what are the uh, deadlines and timeline, etc. So to, to see it like something very concrete and then uh, building a global network does not uh, sound anymore like eating an elephant as a whole, you know, but you can uh, split it in some smaller parts and doing step by step. Uh, we can reach bigger goals. I thank Dina for the presentation in which she already mentioned several things and application, uh, which is already something useful for these uh, networks or youth organizations that could join the global network. And here I, I also would like to propose that we need to think about the uniqueness of this network. What is the unique feature it gives? What, why it is different from others? What special it is about it? And definitely special, something special is the uh, close connection to the World Academy of Art and Science and to the scientists of the world level, to the mentors uh, of and great visionaries uh, unique to the world, who are, by the way, also interested in connecting with young people because the scientists and professionals, they have their expertise, they have uh, experience and profound knowledge, but they lack the new trends and creativity and being fast and uh, 
not limited by the pre previous experience as young people uh, are. So this is a mutually beneficial connection. Uh, what is what I've noticed also with the global networks and with successful global networks is that they use communications uh, at a very high level. So they speak about what they do very transparently, very openly, very often, and it's easy to see their achievements. It's easy to find them on these new social networks like Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, whatever you mentioned, the clubhouse, everybody's talking about that. Um, and it is important both for the World Academy of Arts and Science and for the youth network, uh, youth global network, sorry, I'm always imagining new names for this, for this but the, sound, uh, the, the sense is the same, like, we should communicate and we should speak in the language clear and attractive to young people around the world. This is the key for, for the successful promotion and people will be attracted only by this factor. So to, 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 uh, and also this builds trust to such an, an organization or network. When you see what this network does, clearly every day often and it, and it is valuable then young people would like to join it of course uh, i think it could be important to think about the sustainability of this network uh, and think about some uh, services it could provide young people or organizations with for example the uh, educational courses or training or research which is very evident from the connection with the World Academy of Art and Science. So just brainstorm more about this. I'm sure you did, but this should be something important. Uh, it's not possible to, to move any project if you do not have any uh, resources and if you're not sure about the future of this project. And to... Um, I don't know, maybe it is already existing that a core team, uh, a core group, both from the World Academy of Art and Science, uh, older generation, more experienced generation and younger ones should be connected. Those people who work in this project and they uh, get funds for that. They, it could be a grant or I don't know, it could be finances. So this is uh, something important for the for such big projects and important projects as this one because a volunteering is fine but you can you you can not achieve many things by volunteer volunteering only and yes to to just two more points is uh, building collaborations so building projects that are um, important and interesting for different parties and different groups. It could be a research knowledge um, project uh, or idea from the youth group and finances from th some businesses or government or NGOs from around the world. And by the way, you can also provide youth organizations uh, from around the world about the instruments of youth participation because uh, different countries differ in these instruments. European uh, countries, for example, are usually more active uh, in different like um, youth parliament movements and things like that, that. But other countries in Africa or whatever we can take, they lack these uh, possibilities. So just to, to study the market, to, to see and research, to, to provide a research on what is happening in what countries and what unique based on that research could be given to uh, organizations that would like to be part of the network. And this would give them something valuable they can get from you. And they, uh, by, by participating in the network, they will benefit and the network will benefit 
from them. And of course, uh, it's important always to involve outside consultants, uh, advisors, facilitators, uh, people from outside of the box uh, to have also their expertise and a fresh view. So basically, that's what I wanted to say. And this is what we apply in Ukraine to building programs and to enrolling uh, new uh, people in, in our programs and building new ones. And this could be also applied to the global alliance. So like business plus uh, the scientific approach gives a very, very good result. And it is something very concrete. Uh, in our case, I think that it is really needed. And working with youth is important because, yes, they, uh, they uh, are um, like half of the population of the world is less than 25 years old. So just imagine this huge group. So these statistics makes me sure that it's important to develop youth. This is what we do in Ukraine. This, this is why we... Uh, try all of our programs to come to the international level um, because the world is global. It's very, very easy to connect. And there are all of the instruments that we can use, as Ivana said, that's not a question of how to connect globally. Yes, that's a question what for and um, who. So thank you for this discussion. I, I love to be here today. Great, thanks so much. I, I learned a lot while you were speaking. You had some clear action steps. Um, I think it was very important to first and foremost start with building metrics for any team or organization. A lot of times in nonprofits or social movements, there's a lot of the empathetic and feel good conversations and volunteer work, but if you don't put those deadlines or metrics, you can't really move the needle forward and um, get more people to join in a sustainable way. So I think that's a really great action item that we can take. I also do want to point out, you know, you mentioned a few times, how do you find what's unique? And of course, there are many different networks around the world you can join. There's plenty of different organizations that we're all a part of, but what really will make everyone want to join the Youth Leadership Network? So I'd like to turn the conversation now. We have about 25 minutes. Um, just, I would like two bullets from each speaker. So let's try to keep it under two minutes each. Just about um, two specific recommendations that you see the Youth Leadership Network being that unique network that you would engage in or something you'd like us to implement so we can help your organization. So I'd love to, um, I'll start with Vanessa, I'm looking at my screen here, so I'll go Vanessa, Gian, um, Ivana, and then Elena, if you'd like to touch again, but I know you had some fantastic bullet points already outlined. So, um, and then we'll end with Dina, and I know we got the video working now, so we'll um, see that, and then we'll open for Q&A to the audience. So. Again, just two points about what are two clear steps that YLN can help your organization or you'd like to see as we're moving forward and building this. So Vanessa, please. Thank you so much, Jody. So um, two important uh, points to know uh, how we, you can help uh, the, the organization. It's, um, I think that something important is to mobilize um, right now social media. Um, right now that we are in quarantine, I know that everybody's talking about social media. So I think that something that will be really helpful is to, if we unite together and we create a social media campaign, it will be like an excellent, um, an excellent push to, to start um, adding more people and start creating more organizations that also are working in the same goal. So I think that's um, one important point that we can start. Um, we can start right now sharing our social media on uh, the chat, <laughs> everybody, and we can start being connected and um, create something else after this great panel that we are having. Um, and another uh, another point that I think that uh, would be really helpful that we can start creating something together, um, it would be that um, additional to the social media strategy, uh, we could we can have a educational campaign. I think that um, right now um, education is uh, we have a lot of, of 
lack of education in the world in so diversity um, subjects. Right now, um, on the health subject, um, we have a lot of people that um, they they have lack of education, and also in climate change, that that's the 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 mainly subject that we work on. So I think that um, additional to this big social media campaign that we can work together on, we can create this education campaign in, inside the, the social media campaign. So um, right now it's like really, really popular to have influencers and um, people that can um, attract more people in social media. So maybe we can start creating influencers, but in a good way, influencers that educate influencers that give uh, opportunities to, to young people. So um, I think that Great. these are like the two main things. Perfect. Thanks so much, Lily. Thanks so much for that. Um, Gian, let's turn it over to you. What are your two recommendations for while and that how we can help you? Yes, uh, I think the first point would be resources. I think it's been mentioned before. Uh, many young people actually have stages to perform in a way. They have channels, they have network, but they have lack of resources, serious lack of resources. And when they have resources, usually it's very donor driven in a way, very market-based solution that they are expecting. So eventually the young people have no control over the project they are proposing in the first place. It becomes a zombie. It becomes like just another job, uh, you know. So basically there's no meaningful youth participation in that. So actually resources that is actually allows them also enough freedom uh, to liberty to actually exercise their own um, um, solutions as well, according to their own complexities and make it more localized. So resources and localized. And it brings me to my second point, which is representation, diverse representation, more, more um, you know, proactive approach to actually engage more young people in other regions, Africa, Asia, Eurasia, um, all of other regions, uh, Pacific. Um, so actually Pacific, I think we need to engage more diverse young people and diverse voices as well, because the, the problems that we're facing right now is actually becoming more complex and more interconnected in a way. Uh, it is, has been proven by this pandemic. So I think uh, the, the only way forward is actually to be more, um, 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 actually to be more diverse, uh, gender-wise and race-wise and, and many uh, region-wise, I think we need to be more uh, proactive in that. So I think that would be uh, two of my, uh, my, uh, my, my, my inputs, Jody. Great, thanks so much, Gian. Um, Ivana, I'd love to hear your thoughts on two recommendations. Thank you. Uh, well, the, the first recommendation would be to try to use the bottom-up approach of solution uh, problem-solving strategy in order to uh, understand the real needs of people and youth and to avoid being an alienated network of, um, of leaders. Uh, so this can be by aligning with the existing co-working uh, labs and, uh, and, and NGOs that work uh, in the in the different countries. And uh, se my second advice would be, because I think also it is very, uh, it is the 20, it's the 21st uh, uh, century approach towards uh, NGOs and uh, civil society engagement also. Uh, so my second uh, proposal would be to uh, be uh, very loud and clear about uh, the principles of the Youth Leadership Network and to have really on the, on the front page uh, of the Youth Leadership ne Network uh, clear principles that everything uh, we do that we want to do has to be 100% aligned with the Paris uh, Climate Agreement, for example, and so on and so forth. So um, I also have proposed earlier, uh, but it was not uh, so successful, the, my proposal yet <laughs> but uh, advocating for the the change of the notion of security throughout the movement called security for me uh for example to change the idea um the idea of, for me i i don't feel safe if i have the uh, i don't know great uh, military potential of the country but rather if i have the clear water to drink and so on and so forth so these are just some of the thoughts to, to think about. And yeah, thank you. Great. Um, Olena, do you have any additional points, two points you'd like to make? And then um, I'm going to let Dina introduce our video and then we'll take open Q&A. Um, actually, I've mentioned everything at the beginning and now uh, everyone added to, uh, to what is important. Uh, 
my steps are the same, like identify first the needs of these youth organizations and uh, youth leaders, what are their pains, what they want to, to solve, what, and then form the portfolio of our uh, proposal. So the notion of our uniqueness, the notion of what they get from this uh, cooperation and from this network and what they can uh, give to it. That's that's it, and I just laughed when Vanessa said about the influencers. I remember it about my flu and was ca coughing all of the time. But it's great to have this opportunity uh, of being online and so connected from different countries from around the world. So whenever you are in whatever state you are, it's it's great. So we are already. A global network so this this network is already global if it has such people as they are in this panel great thank you dina would you like to say a few words before the support team from wasp will share our video i'd like to say that our platform is envisioned as a place where we will connect together and where we will unite to transform current leadership uh, and transform it into the united leadership uh, more exclusive leadership and uh, now you will see from the video because as I said discussions will be open and will be reliable and uh, directly connected with decision makers that's how we envision it so I think it will be Great. it will cover everything that you uh, pointed out and also okay. Vanessa uh, I agree with your social media campaign we can speak about it and also promote this platform because this is not violent platform it's the worldwide platform it's platform for all of us okay all right now uh, can i please ask uh, admins to share a video <laughs> So that is the beginning of our teaser video. We have a lot more work to be done, um, but with your help and recommendations, I know we'll be able to get there. I want to thank everyone for taking my questions, answering so clear and precisely. And I'd love for everyone to share their contact info with the audience members, start connecting online and sharing each other's movements. And I hope to see you guys all soon. Thank you.